Hey everyone, Palantir gave us some great insights into how development of its AIP boot camps are going, also the revenue that it's driving from those products. I'll also reveal what I think about Palantir's latest strategy decisions. I'll discuss its profitability growth over the last several years, and I'll update you on my recommendation for Palantir stock. If you aren't already aware, I made a big change in my Palantir stock recommendation recently, and I'll share with you what that was in this video as well. So let's dive into the details. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so Palantir saying that revenue increased by 21% to $634 million in the most recent quarter, and that was driven by the momentum of AIP and their continued strong performance in the U.S. commercial. That was music to my ears. That's what I had been looking for from Palantir, is greater expansion in its U.S. commercial business and commercial business overall, because that's where I felt Palantir's opportunity set is the greatest. Sure, it's wonderful that it's gaining traction with governments worldwide, but there's a limit to how much it can grow with governments because there's a limited amount of governments worldwide. And so there's a smaller ceiling in that segment, whereas there's millions and millions of businesses in the world and Palantir can continue serving those businesses and really not reach the ceiling of that performance given how small Palantir is right now relative to the overall business segment, the enterprise spending segment. So I was happy to see Palantir make progress on this front and Palantir management saying that interest in its AIP is loud and clear. Not only is it succeeding, but it is accelerating. Boy, that's better than I was expecting. Not only is it succeeding, but it's accelerating, meaning the rate of growth is increasing. So I really liked what I saw from Palantir in the latest quarter in terms of revenue growth. And Palantir has, over the longer term, done a great job keeping costs under control. Let me share with you Palantir's operating profit margin in the trailing 12-month period. You can see how after bottoming out in late 2020 at negative 120%, Palantir really started to focus on cost management. And since then, it's made dramatic improvements and it's profitable on the bottom line now for several consecutive quarters. Operating profit margin now has risen to 5.39%. So great progress on that front as well. So not only has it implemented this new product category, this new service that's driving accelerated demand, it's done so while keeping costs under control. So that's what makes it really impressive for me, not only delivering an innovative product or service, that's generating strong demand, but doing so at reasonable costs. That's really where I like to see businesses operate. That's the name of the game, right? Anybody can deliver an excellent product or service if you're willing to accept massive losses on the bottom line, right? I can develop a product that costs me $100 million to create and then sell it to you for $1 million. You will love it right? Because you'll feel like you're getting such great value, but that would lead to massive losses for me. And that's not sustainable. So there's a lot of businesses like there out like that out there today, right? That doesn't impress me. I don't invest in companies like that. I want to see companies deliver great products at reasonable cost and generate a difference between what they sell that product and what it costs them to make that product. That leaves a profit for investors. That's what investors are interested in. And so on the back of these results, I upgraded Palantir stock. I placed it on a borderline buy. I had, gosh, Palantir stock is one that I've changed my recommendation on so often, more often than usual, because the stock price is so volatile. It moves so much, so quickly that I need to change my recommendation because the valuation fluctuates, right? I'm not willing to pay an unlimited price for a good business. Palantir, I acknowledge is a good to great business, but I'm not willing to pay, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not willing to pay an unlimited price. So when the price increased in, I want to say late uh, March, 
I told investors it was a good time to take profits. So I recommended Palantir stock. I downgraded it back down to a hold, right? But after the latest earnings results came out and I saw progress on these several initiatives and Palantir stock price came down by roughly 15% following the earnings results, the combination of those factors led me to upgrade Palantir stock again. So now I have it on a borderline buy. Not a clean buy, not just yet, because of the valuation, it's still trading at an expensive that I feel, a valuation that I feel is a little too expensive. I would wait, you know, it's on the borderline, it's right there, right? So it moved closer back to being a buy. That's where I started the year. I started the year recommending Palantir stock as a buy, and then I downgraded it because the price went up so much, not because the business was in bad shape, it's just the price went up so much that the risk versus reward balance, now I didn't like so much. Now it's moving back to being more favorable. So Palantir made great progress there and they intend to continue relentlessly landing new customers and subsequently expanding those relationships as our products gain traction and have meaningful impact within enterprises. It's the land and expand strategy. I've heard this with many, many businesses they just try and get in with the customer. And then once they're in, they are confident that their service is so valuable that they can expand and, and offer that business more and be able to gain more revenue. And so they sustain their high volume of boot camps with over 915 organizations participating, and they expect the positive, favorable unit economics and higher throughput to continue to accelerate our business. That's great to hear. Not only is revenue growing, but it's accelerating. The second derivative is increasing, which I like when I'm looking at an investment. In the first quarter, they added 41 net new customers in U.S. commercial, which was an increase of 69% year over year. And that just goes to highlight the opportunity ahead, right? They increased 69% year over year, but that was only 41 customers. They're still so small in terms of the number of businesses they serve, that the opportunity is so large. And the reason they're so small in the number of businesses they serve is because they're so expensive. Palantir is a best-in-class service. Very few businesses can afford them right now. But as Palantir gets better and is able to lower their cost to serve, they can expand that opportunity set and reach more businesses because they will be more affordable to more businesses. So all in all, the full picture, I really liked what I saw from Palantir. The strategy, the land and expand strategy, I like that strategy from Palantir because their service has proven to be a really good service. Businesses have demonstrated, have given them the feedback to give them the confidence. Like, yes, we know that when we go into a business and we offer our product, that business becomes more profitable. And so we can feel comfortable getting in there because that business will realize after three months, six months, nine months, or 18 months, that as a result of our relationship with the business, that business is more profitable. So that business will want to spend more with us because we can do more and more for that business to make that business more profitable. So I like this strategy from Palantir. When you have this kind of confidence, this many years of relationships with businesses and governments where you gain confidence that your service is so valuable, then this strategy works and you're seeing evidence of that strategy. So I can understand the strategy. I like the strategy. And that's partly why I've you know, upgraded a notch higher my recommendation for Palantir stock. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.